Now let's talk about playing with objects in JavaScript. So we've talked about arrays. Arrays are lists. Objects, well, just a plain ordinary object is similar to an array in that it can be a list of things, but whereas arrays are numbered lists, objects have labels for each of the items inside the list. So let's look at this example that we have here. We've got a variable named dog and we can tell by these curly braces that this is an object. We've got a variable cat and it's wrapped in curly braces. It's an object as well. We've got a variable called pet names and with the square brackets it's an array. So in the array we've got Woody and Bob. Two names. This is item 0. This is item 1. In the objects we've got a label name and then the value and then a label type and then the value. So a property name, a property type, the values are Bob and Cat. So when I write these things out with the console, there's my first object, there's my second object. We can add console.log for Cat as well. If we run that again, there we are. So here's my two objects and my one array. Now, because arrays can hold anything, they can hold numbers, booleans, strings, dates, they can also hold objects. So, let's create an array called pets. And this array is going to be a collection of all these pets. Now, I've got a dog object. I'm going to put that in my array. I've got a cat object. I'm going to put that in my array. And then we're going to put others in there as well. So let's say var pets is an array. And the first item in the array is our variable dog. The second one is our variable cat. So if we console log out pets, let's see what we get. There we are. So it's an array that contains two objects. There's the curly braces around the first one, and then a comma, and then the curly braces around the second one. So we could have written it out this way. We could have written var pets equals and then that and then the cat could be this as well or we can have a combination if I run this again there you go I get the exact same result coming back I just wrote out this is called the object literal it literally is this these are the two different properties that we have inside here. There's the property name and the property value. So, what if I wanted to add something new to our pets array? Let's say we get another pet and we want to add it into this array. Well, if you remember from the last video, when you want to add something to an array, you use push. That'll add it to the end of the array. So this will become item number two. So. Woody is number 0, Bob is number 1, and number 2 is going to be what we put inside here. So I could use a variable and put the variable inside there, or I can use the object literal. So let's do that. Let's say name Roxy type is also a dog. There we go. If we log that out again, Clear the screen because we've got lots of stuff. There we are. There are our three objects. So we have an array that has three objects inside of them. If we wanted to write out just the one inside there that we just added, that would be index number two. The way you would read this is pets sub two. Any the number inside there, that's the index number. But when you're reading it out, if you're reading the code to somebody, it's the name of the array, sub, and then the index. And there it is. There is pets sub 2. This is the third item inside of our array. We put this object literal, and there it is. Now what if we wanted to add other properties with Arrays, we say push, and we can add items into the array. But what if we wanted to add something to our object? 
Well, let's use cat as an example. If we wanted to add a new property into here, we can say cat.age equals 2. We wanted to add something into dog, we could say dog dot age, or another way of writing this is like this. So this is the property inside of this object. This is the property inside of the object. If you use the dot notation, you have to use the variable name like this. If you use the square brackets, then you put the name inside of quotation marks. Now, for this one right here, and as well for this one now, we have the object literal. We're not pointing to a variable. With cat, we've added this property in here. If I was to now console.log pets, take the whole thing. There we go. There's our three objects inside of the variable pets, the array pets. The first one, we added an object literal, woody, dog. There it is. With the second item we added to the pets array, that was the variable cat. We've added this property age with the value 2 to that object. This object is sitting inside the array, so by adding it, to the cat object, it also got added here. So there's our age two, it's sitting there. Now Woody, Roxy, those two, they are object literals. This was an object literal when it was added. This is an object literal when it was added. So we need to access the variable arrays and say, hey, go to the first item inside of the array pets, and then add the property there. So how would we type that? That would be pets number zero dot age equals 14. Pets two dot age equals six. There we go. So we have now added an age property to the first object inside of pets and an age property to the third element inside pets. If we, here I'll just move this down to there, run it again. There we are. Now we have the age property in all three of these. Name, type, and age. Same three properties in all three objects. If we wanted to use the different syntax here, instead of dot age, we could use this syntax as well. We just put the square brackets on the end and write age. That's going to work the exact same way as this one did. There it is. All three of them are inside of there. So we can access any of the properties that we want by either the dot notation or the square bracket syntax. When you're putting things inside of an array, if you put in the object literal, then you have to use this syntax. You have to say, okay, no, the first thing or the third thing inside of that array, that's where I'm going to be adding. If you were going to be using variables, well, then you can do this you can target the original object and add the property on that way. If you wanted to add a new property to this, we can target the original object and add it there. But if I target it through the array, like this, pets1, that's the cat, dot, let's make up a brand new property. Let's, uh, well, let's say we'll change age to three instead of two, and we'll make up a brand new property, hungry. We'll set that to true, and then we'll move 
our console log statement here down to the very bottom again save it and run and there we are so you can see I went through the array pets to get to the age property so pets sub 1 is our cat object we updated the age to 3 we set hungry to true so we added a property and we changed an existing property going through the array instead of directly going back to the object and if we go back to that cat variable that we had at the very beginning we'll run this again there it is cat got the updated property and got the brand new hungry property so just because we targeted that object through the array didn't mean that we lost the fact that it was dealing with this original object so I can go directly to here to change this or I can change it within the context of this array I'm talking about the same object so both things both cats are the same object it doesn't matter where I go to update it I'm updating that same thing so recapping objects and array they can both be considered kind of lists of things the difference between them is that arrays are a numbered list and objects you give labels you give names to each of the properties that are inside there name type age hungry these are the labels that get associated with the values instead of just numbers